thanks everybody. I'm Simon. This is Aaron. Um, quick history of time. I joined the advisory board of a company that made a 3, 3D joystick that was irrelevant at the time, named Six Sense, four years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I met a guy named Jan who had built a treadmill, and I helped take him to Kickstarter. And so through that process, and then through my longtime collaboration with Aaron, we worked on both of the omnidirectional treadmills. I'm now the chief marketing officer of Seabright, and I help a bunch of startups. Aaron has helped uh, design the Seabright Wave. He's helped um, with a replaceable liner known as About Face from Eric Greenbaum. And uh, he was one of the engineers uh, who helped to try to solve some of the problems with the Omni. So we've been doing this for a little while. And after we both came off the Omni, um, Aaron, who has been designing chairs for Herman Miller and Steelcase for a long time. The one you just rolled out. Is... The one you just rolled out. <laughs> um, and I had a conversation. I said, Aaron, let's do it. Let's make a chair. So this is the chair reimagined for virtual reality. There are some subtleties um, to what it does, and I'll let Aaron talk through it too. Um, but I'll talk through just a few key features. First of all, it is a fully rotational chair, meaning it has rotational power. We have rotational USB and rotational HDMI. We, we, we say a lot of prayers about the rotational HDMI. We'll see how that progresses. Um, it also has uh, a D-pad. Mm. A what pad? A D-pad. A directional oh. pad for, like arrow keys, essentially. Oh, okay. Your... So as each of you tries the chair, what you're going to find is that you can naturally and, um, and intuitively uh, locomote, move in VR, and you're able to control what direction you're facing, and you're able to control forward, back, left, right. Um, in addition, because you've got this uh, tangle-free operation, your hands are then free to potentially use a motion control device like a six cent stem or whatever mm -hmm. uh, Oculus or uh, Valve-HTC come up with. The, um, the rotational power in USB is so that you could essentially have a PC outside and an Oculus uh, running through here. The operating theory is the Rift is going to need a lot of pixels for a long time. It's unlikely that uh, next-gen uh, Wi-Fi bandwidth is going to be adequate um, to power those displays. So we're going to continue to need some some wired connection to a high-end, high-performance uh, Rift-like experience for some time. It's also a fully encased PC. Mm -hmm. So um, initially, we're going to make this you know, an enthusiast thing. Um, it'll feature this kind of DIY kinds of construction. Um, it'll fight, feature the ability to have a full micro ATX motherboard. And you can get down there and, and take a look. That's the quick talk through. We can go through any questions and then just start doing demos. Yeah, sure. when we're done, we'll, yeah. uh, we'll take it somewhat apart and put it up on a table so oh, cool. we can see what's going on. But um, something to, uh, having done the demo a few, <laughs> a few times now, mm -hmm. um, the first step is to find the front of the chair. It has mm -hmm. a crotch. We have a crotch. We align to that. Mm -hmm. And um, you almost align your, your bottom end a little bit further back than you would normally on a stool. You can hear these clicks. And you want to try to do this with your, without moving your upper body. You know, keep everything centered well. Mm -hmm. And literally, almost like hula hoop, <laughs> I'm making these switches that are affecting this dude in this world. And he's moving, he or she is moving in that direction. Um, what's important to understand, and it takes a little bit, uh, even, even with seasoned Oculus users, uh, you'll see them, um, you know, looking where they want to, so they keep their head aligned with their body. The whole goal of this is allow that to be uncoupled, meaning you can go forward, like I just did with that switch, but you can look to the side. Mm -hmm. You can back yourself into a corner without having to look into the corner to gauge yourself to the corner. Mm -hmm. So um, that's something to explore when you when you finally come around through the demo. Um, definitely un explore the uncoupled portion where you're moving, looking somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Okay. And for everybody kind of accustomed to the challenges in VR. Um, there's Tangle, right? So this is one of the challenges, this mm -hmm. chair. Again, we're re reinventing the chair for virtual reality. No keyboard, no mouse, no screen, no typewriter. All of task seating for years has been defined around that use case. Also look how Aaron is seated. Mm -hmm. This is a straddled position, and it allows more dynamic movement. He can rotate more easily. He can also maintain his balance in virtual space better because he's in a position that's a little like having your knees bent when you're in a, in a sport that requires lateral motion. So there are lots of subtleties to the problems we solve. Having the fully integrated PC makes the VR experience portable. What you're going to find is as you do the demo, we don't need to babysit you. When was the last time you gave a VR demo where someone was tethered to an Oculus? You didn't have to 
to babysit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trip cords and everything. Yeah, and so we're, we're feeling this odd laziness as people go through and we're like, oh, just go for it. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Um, we'll just start running. Who wants to be first?